You will be the greatest pilot the world has ever known. This is bullshit! Enter Hideaki Anno's directorial debut and travel back to a time where everyone wears their pants too high and calls out their premeditated special robot attacks because... Noriko and Kazumi are chosen to grace the skies with their just sexual enough to still be considered leotards because they're the best Japanese robot pilots in their class except for the protagonist who got in because some idiot with brain cancer sensed her potential or something. Friends die because of her incompetence, but it doesn't matter because... <laughs> Soon they make friendship with Mother Russia, the hot-blooded foreign redhead who thinks she's better than everyone else and can't seem to keep her titties put away. Sound familiar? Mm, you know the old saying, birds of a feather are the worst girls in their respective series. Did you know? When Anna wasn't busy godfathering in some of the most recognizable mecha tropes and traits, he and his team were pioneering the goddamn booby bounce. Are you even listening to what I'm saying? Nowadays you can load up stuff like Maka and Key and see some serious Havoc Engine tier flip-flop physics shenanigans like it's an afterthought, but this shit blew minds back in the 80s. It was like the world knew only peanut butter and then one day the jelly fairy swooped down in the middle of the night and impregnated everyone's sandwiches and then the next morning everybody was like, oh, yeah, no, there's no going back. And I am very bad at analogies. Topu o nere. Is the show that paved the way for Gurren Lagann and gave Evangelion its snack machines. And if you don't think that's a tightest shit, you can get out of my face. And what I mean is, Gunbuster is iconic and influential in so many ways that I don't like to make it a habit to spoil the verdict of a should you watch midway through an episode, but you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not going through it at least once. And that's not to say it doesn't have its own unique merits. Part of the enjoyment of Gunbuster comes from reliving the excitement from that era of anime where entire genres began to develop and mold into what they are today. Pour on top that a fun story with an excellent soundtrack that I can scarcely pepper into this video because both Gynax and the YouTube Content ID system seem to derive pleasure from making my life a living nightmare. Superb frame-by-frame -frame action sequences plus intriguing science and characters, and you've got not only one of the most recognizable mecha anime ever to exist, but also one of the most enjoyable. Gunbuster's only six episodes long, and its first half dedicates itself mostly to world building and setting up the technology of said world, which I must say comes off as a total wet dream to any space-time quantum physics enthusiast even if the science itself is a bit dated. And if you were to come at me with a script and say, okay, we've only got six episodes and we're gonna start out kinda slow, I would Inazuma kick you and your concept of pacing right in the balls. But if there's one thing that Gunbuster excels at, it's being able to keep you intrigued to what's going on most of the time, even when it takes four actual episodes to see what these guys are even fighting. Some of Anno's oldest works are his best, and Gunbuster is no exception. Everyone praises Eva for being the poster child of mecha existentialism, and that's because it's fucking masterful. But Gunbuster did it first, if on a smaller scale. Any Evangelion fan will later on notice that Noriko and Shinji even share a lot of similarities in their character. Like Anno just cut her hair and gave her a penis, obviously without explaining how to use it. And not to parrot my words from my Evangelion videos, but it's this believable inclusion of humanity within an otherwise sci-fi character and setting that help the viewer associate themselves with the hardships and trauma being presented, and makes for a more heartfelt and memorable experience. Now keep in mind that this is an old anime, and while it's aged much better than others in its time period, there are still a few script, pacing, animation, and sound design quirks that might put off some of those coming from a more recent era at first glance. Anno's great, but he's certainly not perfect. There are a lot of plot conveniences here and there that, given your tolerance levels, might put a damper on the overall enjoyment factor, but for me personally, it was nothing worth crying over come those last three magnificent episodes. What makes shows like Gunbuster and also its very different sequel, Diebuster, such a great package is that they are wrapped in an unrivaled accessibility and enjoyment that, when you get down to it, make for some of the very best examples of entry-level anime dishes you could ever serve to someone. And that's something that, especially now, during this more or less stagnated state of anime that we happen to be in, needs to be appreciated and remembered and saluted with arms crossed and penises erect. Shouldn't you watch? Aim for the top gunbuster. Yes. Uh...